Welcome to another message from C3 Mumbai. For more information about C3 Mumbai, please visit our website c3mumbai.com or visit our Facebook page. So we talked about holiness. Come next week. It's going to be an awesome weekend. We talked about holiness um, and God being holy. Um, if you can remember, I'll just remind you how, how that word holy, literally, if you break down the, the original meaning of that word, or the etymological meaning, if you know what that means, it's a big word, isn't it? I'm not joking, that's a real word, etymology, okay? If you look at the, the history of that word, it, the, it breaks down into two things, that, that, that it's um, separated, separate and bright. And that kind of, that kind of does uh, explain some of God, uh, and, and exp- that word holy, when we say holy, we mean, we, when, we, when we say God is holy, we, we're saying He is separate, He's different to us, He's not the same, um, and, but, he st- and, but He stands out, he, He's not the same, he's, he's, he's not like us, but, but there is something in us that is like Him, right? And there's something that we are becoming more like Him as we become more holy in Christ, as we walk with Him, but, but He is separate and He stands out. Um, it talks about God as being light. And a lot of the time when you talk about light, that is actually talking about God's holiness. We've talked about that. And Jesus, when He came and walked the earth, when He came 2,000 years ago, He Himself proved that He was holy, right? He Himself proved that He was holy. He Himself proved through, that, through His holiness that He was God. He, uh, it, it says in 1 Peter 2 verse 22, it says that, that He committed... No sin. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. It's hard to do not sin. Have you ever tried not to sin? That's hard to do. I think that scripture was there, but it's okay if it's not. It's it's hard to do not sin. It's hard not to deceive people. I mean, even just a little bit. To tell a slight distruth or a little white lie, uh, a sort of, you know, as we're doing life and we're doing the stuff we have to do, we're going through everything and, and uh, you know, it's, it's easier just to deceive rather than to tell the truth sometimes, isn't it? But Jesus, how did He live life? How did He do life without telling any lies, without, without, without committing any sin whatsoever? And how, 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 did he, how did He not deceive anyone? How did He do that? Well, He was God. You understand? He's holy. He's holy. You can turn this down a little bit because I feel like I'm booming. And I don't like that because I feel like, uh, like it's like, boo. Um, I'm not here to bang your head off today. I just want you to be relaxed. How did Jesus do that? Well, He was holy. But I want to say something about Jesus. He was God, He is God, He's in the Trinity, we've got the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, they're three in one, right? Jesus didn't come, or or, or should I say, God the Father didn't send Jesus to prove His existence. God didn't send Jesus in order for us to say, yes, I know that God is real because He walked here in the flesh. That's not why God sent Jesus. A lot of the time, this is what is communicated, and um, in, in some regard, it's, it's not wrong to say that God sent Jesus so that we could say, look, He walked the earth in the flesh, therefore He is real. But if that was a complete truth, then why, why would we have the Old Testament? God kept on showing up in the Old Testament. They knew God was real in the, in the, in the desert right? When the Israelites, this is for those of you who know the Bible, um, the the Israelites, when they're out in the desert, there was a a beam coming down from from heaven that would guide them by night, and there was smoke that would guide them by day. And and they would have have literally uh, birds falling out of the sky every day to feed them. And they had manna, which is bread, in the morning that was there. That was, that's enough to prove that there is a God when you're in the middle of a desert, right? Those things start happening when you're in the middle of a desert. I just tell you, uh, you know, I just challenge you to go and try it. You'll know God is real when you're starving hungry and food starts turning out of nowhere, coming out of nowhere. God didn't need to send Jesus to prove that He existed. He, everyone knew that He already existed. Everyone knew that He already existed. Everyone already knew that He was real. Everyone already knew that He was there. 
there is something in each one of us that knows God is there. And we can kind of squash that as much as we want to, but there will be questions that leap into our minds and we go, how is that possible if there's no God? I remember sitting in science class and in Australia, I don't know what it's like here, but in Australia, by law, you have to teach things like evolution, right? And <clears throat> I'm not here to argue about that, but let me tell you something. As I was looking at the science and just going, how did that gap go from an ape to a man. How is that possible? I don't know. I really don't know. I couldn't, I couldn't work it out. How come men don't have a tail anymore? How come, you know, so many how comes. But, 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 but when you think about it enough, you go, you know what? I think there is a God. When you go out in creation and, and, and look at the beauty of what God has created, the stars and the mountains and all of that, of uh, the, the ocean. I love standing on the side of the ocean. This, this week, I, um, uh, Willow, our little girl, has been learning how to go to uh, school. And it's just down here on Welly. And it's actually on the seafront is one of those buildings on the Welly sea face. Is, uh, is there's a little daycare center on the, on the, on the way there. The reason we put it there is so that Rachel can come into office and drop Willow on the way. Isn't that cool? Yay. I'm excited about that. Um, but um, <laughs> that's not why I brought that up. Uh, uh, although when I look at Rachel's face, I do see the beauty of God and all of that sort of stuff. And <laughs> happy 10 years, Rachel. Yeah. Happy 10 years. <laughs> As I was, uh, we have to drop Willow there and they call it the weaning process. Um, some of the days there, Rachel had a bit of a sore back, so I had to take Willow into school. And they, we're weaning Willow off being at home and going to daycare, and we had to wait there. So every day for about a week and a bit, not that I was counting, I had to go in and sit there at Willow School and watch all of these little kids run around. And eventually they send you out and they say, you can go out. And then on the last day, they said, you can just sit out there for the whole time. So from, from 9 a.m. till 11.30, I'm like, oh, this is awesome. And they do, don't go anywhere just in case we need to call you. I'm like, okay, fine. So I'm like, what am I going to do? I'm like, well, I'm on the sea face. So I, I walked over the road, nearly killed myself jumping across that road. <laughs> dodged a few taxi drivers and all of that sort of stuff. Got on the sea face and I just sat there. Just look out on the ocean. Go, Man, this is amazing. You know? There was some little guy camping down there, and I was like, okay, but once you look past that, it's a, this is amazing. God is amazing. There's beauty. The beauty of what God has given us. God didn't need to send Jesus to demonstrate that He exists. We know He exists. So the question is this, is why did Jesus come? Why did God the Father send Jesus? Why? Why would he need to do that? I'll tell you why. Jesus came to demonstrate the love of God to us. That's why Jesus came. God the Father sent his son to demonstrate what love actually is. I mean, think about this statement. Think about this statement. Jesus loves you. Or this statement, God loves you. Okay? Think about that statement for a moment. God loves you. Now, what does that mean? What does it actually mean? God, God has feelings for you? You know, it's like he wants to go on a date with you? or Like, what, what, what does that actually mean? God loves you. So, oh, look at, look at, you know, there's such nice people. I just love them. What does it mean? I'll tell you what it means. It means he's done something. You know, the word love is meaningless without some sort of proving action. Okay? So to say you love something or someone, it means there's going to be an action. And if not, then you don't love that thing or you don't love that person. You know, it's always funny when I, when I, when I hear people that have just met and um, they're going to, you know, be boyfriend, girlfriend, and they say, oh, we're just so in love. I go, oh, huh? <laughs> don't mean to be... Um, uh, negative or anything, but uh, <laughs> soon you won't. <laughs> but it's, it's in the won't part when you choose to still give your life to that person, that proof, the proof, that's where love is actually proved, right? Because there's a giving up of oneself. There's a giving away of one's will in order 
to, to compromise and fit in the life of another person. And that's, that's when, 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 and within marriage, when, when to become, you know, man and wife, if there's one of the, one of the party who's still wanting to hold on to their individual life and have their own sort of thing going on in the, in the background, well, they don't love that other person. Not be, they, they might be able to say, oh, listen, I love you, I love you, I love you to that other person, and that other person's like, thank you, thank you, thank you, but why, 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 why are you doing that? Your, your actions are proving to me that you actually don't love me. So it's good to remember, as you're, if you're a single person, um, that... Uh, if someone is telling you that they love you, you better watch what they're doing more so than what they're saying. Because, you know, some of us struggle with this whole identity where we want to be told that we're loved. At least that's enough. But you know what? Your soul needs much more than that. You need someone who's going to give themselves up for you. That's what it's all about. Let's come back to God in all of this. Jesus was God's demonstration of His love for you and I. That's why God sent Jesus, to prove to us that He loves us. You know, 1 John 3 verse 16, it says this, it says, this is how we know what love is. You want to know what love is? What is love? <laughs> Baby, don't hurt me. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, <laughs> Stop laughing. Jesus Christ, what is love? This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down His life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. How do we know what love is? How do we know what love is? Jesus Christ laying down His life for us. See, see when Jesus came and said, I love you, He didn't even have to say it with words. My dad's got this analogy uh, that I've just thought of. It just popped into my mind. He always says it at around Easter time. It's like, how much does Jesus love you? He says this much. Right? It's a cross. You know the cross? <laughs> you got it? Okay. You know, when, when God the Father looked down on earth and saw what sin was doing, he didn't kind of just go, Oh, look at those poor humans tearing themselves up and dying in sin. They're going to be separate from me. You know that, Jesus? They're going to be separate from me. I love them so much. It's just so sad that that's what's happening. That's not what God did. This is what He said. He said, the death that they deserve because of their sin, I'm going to take upon myself. And this is because of my love for them. See, it's different when you think of it like that. You've got to understand something about Jesus. He is love. Yeah. You know, 1 John chapter 4, verse 8, 8, to, 8 to 10, it says this. It says, um, whoever does not know God, who do, whoever does not love, does not know God, because God is, God is love. What does that mean? Well, that means that, that God is love. That He is the demonstration of what love is. How so? Well, think about Jesus. When you think of that statement, God is love. You could replace that because, I mean, God is Jesus. Jesus is God. Jesus is love. In fact, that's why Jesus came. As proof of the fact that God loves humanity. Even though it's lost, even though it's sin, even though it had broken away from Him. God loves, it. God loves us so, so much. That's why Jesus came. Whoever does not love, does not know God, because God is love. That statement, uh, just let me clear it up. I'm not, I'm not focusing so much on that today, but where it says, who, do not, who does not love, does not know God. It doesn't mean that you need to love people in order to know God. That's not what that's saying. Because you might go away from here and say, oh, I know, I know how to be a Christian now. All I have to do is love each other and love other people. And uh, that's not what that means. What that means is you can't know God, the love of God. You can't know Jesus and not begin to love like He loves. Because it changes you when you begin to know the love of God. When you begin to understand how much God actually loves you. 
So, so this is like the key fruit, right? And if a person's not loving other people, well, there's a good chance that they don't know God yet. They haven't met with Christ. Verse 9, it says, This is how God showed His love amongst us. He sent His one and only Son into the world that we might live through Him. This is how God showed His love. What is the love of God? It's all in Christ. You want to know what God's love is for you? Look at Christ. That is the demonstration. That is why God sent Jesus to prove His love. He sent His one and only Son into the world that we might live. That we might live. What's the opposite of living? Dying. We were dying in sin. God didn't want that to happen, so He loved us. He did something that proved His love, proved the fact that He wants to be with us. He wants to be reunited with us, and He sent His Son. And then verse 10, this is love. Not that we loved God. In other words, not that we were doing anything for Him. Nor could we. I mean, the kind of love that... that that this is talking about, I mean, the kind of love that God gives us is perfect love. It's unconditional. It's, it can't be broken. It can't be stopped. It's always there. There's nothing that you can do. There's no act that you can perform that will stop the flow of God's love to you. But we, on the other hand, if you flip that on the other side, when you talk about love for us, it's hard to love like God loves. We'll love according to behavior, right? We'll love according to what the other person is doing. We'll love according to, to what is happening on, for, to us. We'll give and take. That's why we have to stand on, a, on an altar at marriage time and say, till death do us part. That is actually love. I'm making a commitment to you that even though it gets hard, I'm still going to stick with you because that's a demonstration of God's love to us. Not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. It's... so interesting when you begin to think of Jesus, and you compare it to all of the other, or Him to all of the other belief systems out there, and all of the other channels, all of the other ways. The fact about Jesus is He did come, He proved that He was God, He was holy, He did not sin. Um, and, and some of the things that He did, some of the miracles that he performed, um, the demons that were fleed. Uh, even, even when you think of a guy called Lazarus who was actually dead and, and, and God commanded him to come out of the grave and he actually rose again. He lived. What Jesus did was miraculous and, and it did prove that he was God. He was God through and through. But you know what? This is... This is what we have to remember, had Jesus just not gone to the cross um, and just descended to heaven and said, look, I've come now, you know that I'm, I'm Jesus, you know that I'm God, I, you know that I'm the Christ. You know, when, when Peter, he, 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 he says, you are Christ, you are the one, you're the Messiah. If, if God was there just to prove that He exists, that would have been enough. God, Jesus could have just said, right, that's it, I'm out of here. See, I told you I was God, I am God, I'm out. He wouldn't have had to go to the cross. But you know, if that's what had happened, if Jesus had to just come, did his thing, healed a few people, set a few, you know, demon-possessed people free, 
and, and, and called a few people out of the grave and called them and said, you know what, I am God. Just follow me now, I've proven to you. This would have just gone down as another one of those religions. There was this guy called Jesus who just came and then he went. He said he was God. But the difference is the fact that Jesus went all the way to the cross and became our atoning sacrifice. That's what it makes it different. That's why it makes, that's what makes it totally different about this following Jesus is it's all about love. Now, and when, I, when I say love, I don't mean, oh, you know, we've got to just love people. We've just got to be nice people. You know, the, the Christian faith is all just about, about, you know, being nice people and uh, blessed are the meek, you know, blessed are the meek, right? I mean, that is true. Blessed are the meek. I could do a whole sermon on that, and I have in the past, but, but we miss the whole point of it when we forget the fact that we were doomed. See, had Jesus just come, then ascended, we would still be doomed in our sin. And God would have been holy, and He still would have been holy, as He was. And He has, he's always has been. See, God, you've got to understand this, this, is what I want you to hear. God's holiness won't change your heart. God's holiness won't actually penetrate into your world and change you. It's impossible. Because you're not holy. An unholy thing and a holy thing can't be one. They can't exist together. So it's all good to know about God's holiness, but you've got to understand something about God. He is love. And without His love, you will never have access to His holiness. Your future is in God's love. Your holiness is in God's love. And when I say God's love, I'm talking about Jesus. It's in Him. Your hope is in God's love. Your everything is in the love of God. God will always be holy. He wants to make you holy, but you will never be holy unless you understand this one thing about God. Jesus is all about love. This is why we celebrate Christmas. This is the message that I'm going to bring next week. Something very similar to this, that God, this is all about God's love. Christmas is all about God's love. God sent His Son as an act of love because love is not just a thing that you say, it's something that you do. And God actually proved what love is by sending His only Son and said, this is what love is. You want to know what love is? This. I'm sending my Son because I know I'm holy. This is God speaking. I know I'm holy. And I know that there's no way you could ever want to be like you. There's no way you could ever be like I am. But I want you to be like I am. So I'm sending my son. Because I love you. I love you. I love you. And this is what makes being a follower of Jesus completely different. Because it's all about understanding love. It's all about understanding the act of love. The fact that we have been given freely. Freely. So what do we do about this? What do we do with this information? Well, as we begin to follow Jesus, you begin to actually work out what you love. You'll begin to work out what you love and what you don't love. You'll know what you love by what you give your life up for, because that's what love is. Because that's what proved God's love, right? That Jesus gave up His life. God sent His only Son as a sacrifice. He gave up His Son so that we could know what it is to be a follower of God and what it is to be holy, because He loved us. So what is love? Well, love is... What you're giving up something for. <laughs> so when Jesus comes into our world and he says, come follow me. What he's actually calling you into is he's saying, come and love me like I've loved you. 
Because whatever you love, you give yourself up for. <laughs> Do you get it? Now, let's just talk about this for a moment. Let's just stay on this for a moment. Because there's this whole question sometimes, I know for me, as I walk in my faith with the gospel, the gospel that it's not about my works, but about His works. That I can never work enough to save myself. And, and that because it's a question of going back to holiness, right? I can never make myself holy before God. That's impossible. It's only but for the love of God that I'm made holy through the sacrifice of Christ. So when you begin to think about us and our works, and what is it that we need to do now that we follow God? Right? Or how do I, how, what was it that I need to do? Like, I, I accept His love. I accept His mercy. Well, Jesus just says, He just says, come follow me. And, 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 he, and, he, and he says, just, just follow my ways. Why does He just say that? Well, following His ways and following His commands is, is love. It's, that's the way we love Him back. How, what, 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 what is worship about? When we sing and we worship, what is, what is this serving about? Like where we come and, you know, I'm so grateful to all of you who gave up time this morning to come in early and set up, help set up. What's that about? Well, you're giving something up. You know what you're doing when you do that? You're loving God. You're loving God. So, so when you get set free from this whole, I'm trying to make God happy kind of thing. I'm trying to do something so that God would see me. And we begin to realize that God saw you a very long time ago and He's made a way for you to, to, have, to walk with Him. And that, it, you, your, your, that your, your salvation in Him is not ever going to shift if you believe in Him and if you follow Him. It's never going to move because of what He's done on the cross. And then you begin to walk with Him. And when He begins to ask you to do things... Or when there's a call from church to say, hey, listen, would you like to help out with this or help out with that? Or would you like to give to this or something like anything? All of this stuff, all of this stuff is about love. Because it's how we love. It's always one thing to say, oh, I love God, you know. Well, as we know, had God just said that, I love those people and not done anything about it, we would be still doomed. We could see God in all his brightness, in all his separation, and all of these amazing, amazing stuff about God, but we would never know him because of love. And it's the same for us. In our response to his love, we love him back. How do we love him back? How do we love him back? Well, whatever you love, you give yourself up for. Whatever you love, you'll give yourself to. There will be a laying down of our ways. The way we love God is to give up our lives to Him. That's how we love Him. Because that's how He loved us. And you know what? We just love God by what we do. We love God by what we do when we serve. So if we go back to 1 John chapter 3, verse 16, the place where it actually starts, and, and all through the book of John, like John without the numbers, and so there's, there's the book of John, you know this, right? Um, and then there's one, two, and three, John. It's just confusing. When I was in Bible college, I actually made a mistake on one of my assignments where the whole assignment, I referenced the wrong book in the Bible because I didn't realize it was meant to be referencing one John. And I was referencing... Anyway, I got a... I failed. <laughs> Story of my life, you know. I, But, but God, you'll see this repeated. If you read this book, you'll see this repeated all the time. Like John doesn't talk about love or the love of Christ without, without connecting to it. Therefore, we should love each other. It's quite annoying. 
but, but this, is, this, is, this is it. What's this about? This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid his life down for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. It goes on. I'm just looking at it here. It's not on the screens. But it says, If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother in, or sister in need but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? In verse 18 it says, Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. but with actions and with truth. Where do we start? We start with what we've got right here, this church, our brothers and sisters here. <laughs> we don't just go around and giving each other hugs and air kissing when we see each other on a Sunday, which is all good. Oh, hello. It's all good, it's all good. But church is meant to be so much more than that. Church is meant to be the place where the love of God is demonstrated, not just talked about. That's why I love what Rachel put together yesterday with the team, the Hope Collab, where we're doing something in the community. We're actually demonstrating God's love for those people. Every Sunday when you come in and you set up, you pack down, you're involved, you're on the ushers team, you're on the media team, you're on the uh, children's church team. You're loving God. You're just loving God. Yeah. How are you loving God? Because you're doing something for each other. And you're demonstrating it. That's what this whole church is about. That's what will actually bring a revival. Prayer will bring a revival, yes. But what will bring a revival is us loving one another. Because there will be a place where it'll be like, God is present because they are, they are giving up their time, they're giving up their money, they're giving up their stuff for each other and they're building this thing together and people will come to want, they'll, it'll, be like, it'll be like when, when uh, the Queen of Sheba came and uh, looked at what Solomon had built, the temple in the Old Testament. The Queen of Sheba, she came, she traveled from the other side of the world because she'd heard of this, this glorious temple that was built. And when she came, she was shocked and awed and couldn't believe it, what was built there. And, and what Solomon was doing was just demonstrating his love for God. You know? And that's, this is everything that we do here. It's a demonstration of God's love. Next week, when, when we have this East, uh, Christmas service, you know, um, as a church, we, we're going ha- to have a ton of people in the room. You know, we're going to have tons and tons and tons of people. But you know what? It won't mean stick to them if love isn't demonstrated by us. Um, and we, we can be a community that is just a gathering of people coming together every week and uh, maybe we could do lots of marketing and maybe we could do lots of this and that and get tons of people in the room like we had last week. Last week was pretty cool. It felt nice to have that many people in the room. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed having, you know, 300 or so people in the room. But one thing I, I could see that was happening from the stage when I finished preaching, people just d- dispersed because no one really knew each other. And it's okay, I'm not... But we can't... We can't, we can't if we're going to make a difference in this city, um, the power of God will be on the demonstration of love. Because it's the demonstration of God's love for us that actually connects us to God. And when we are connected to God, we begin to connect people to God. You understand? 
When, when we are connected to God, we have this suddenly, we have this connection. We're like, gosh, I, I understand love. I understand the fact of who Jesus is. It's all about love. That, that, that He is the demonstration of God's love. And I can just accept Him. It's not, it's not about my works, but about His works. And we begin to get all of these things just exploding in our, in our minds. And we go, oh, I'm so blessed. I'm just going to keep it to myself. <laughs> God is God is like made sure that it's written in books like John, that like, okay, accept the love, but, 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 but as Christ has laid down his life for you, first place you need to start looking to lay your life down for is someone else. And where do we do that? We do it right here. As we do it, as we do it, mark my words, this place will shine brighter than anything in this city but the onus is on us it's it's almost like god has let let it be with us to say you know what you if you want this you can have it but you got to step out of that boat and begin to walk on that kind of water where it's not so much about you and your faith anymore but it's about the faith that's been given to you and you just beginning to pass it out there's and you know what? It can start by simply crossing the room next week and, and, and saying, uh, uh, hey, hey, I'm, uh, I'm Ryan. Uh, I haven't seen you around here before. I come here. Uh, what's your name? Uh, Harinda. Oh, okay. Hi, Harinda. Hi, Harinda. Harinda Shalima. Okay, okay. Oh, nice to have you here. What do you do? Oh, you're a banker. Okay, well, cool. Okay, I'm also a banker. You know, whatever. <laughs> hey, uh, we should hang out. Just, just step beyond. I just don't ever want this church to be a place where we have a big gathering and everybody is like nervous about who they are and a bit scared about, you know, all the new people there. And they're like, oh, there's someone I've never... <laughs> And, oh, there's someone I know. <laughs> I know you. you know? <laughs> so, hey, how are you? You know? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You're like laughing, going, go away, leave me alone. <laughs> but that's how it is in church, right? And I think we, we, have, we have to really, really fight to be a demonstration of God's love. We have to fight for it. Because we know His holiness. We know He is amazing. We know that He is incredible. But God is going to bring people into our community that don't know. And the only way that they will know is if you open the door for them. We are Christ with skin on. That's what the church is. Jesus with skin on it. We are the body of Christ. That's what we are. And, and, and the world is waiting for the church to rise up and be that demonstration of love. And it might just start with getting someone's phone number, not for going on a date, although, I mean, whatever. <laughs> but if they're not saved yet, you need to... Anyway. It may, it may start with just offering someone a coffee. It may start with... See, you've got to understand something about this is your home. This church is your home. This is, this is our home. This is an extension of wherever you've come from to be today. It's like, this is yours. You give money to it like you do, you know, that money that we give to this. It just goes towards the bills, like, just like a home does. We just pay the rent in this stinking place. You know, because we, this is our home. This is us. This is ours. When someone comes into this place, you know, it's like, just treat it like they've come into your home. Treat it like they've come into your place and, and they need to be, you would never, I mean, if you did, you would be a very bad host. If someone's come into the door, you knock on, they've knocked on the door and you let them in, you just sit them down and you just walk off like. <laughs> you just go on back to your computer. I mean, if, listen, that's a bad, that's a bad host. You know, someone comes up, one of, the, one of the things I love about Indian homes, as a foreigner here, is just the, the hospitality is amazing and make you feel like a king. Right? So you walk in, would you like a cup of water? No, I'm okay, I just had one. Okay, 
I'll get you a cup of water then. <laughs> okay. I guess I'll drink it. You go to the bathroom. Would you like some flip-flops? Would you like some flip-flops? Oh, sure, flip-flops. Wear mine. Just kick off the flip-flops. <laughs> All these things as, a, as an outsider, you're like, wow, this is amazing. I feel like a king. I feel so special. You know? It's what... It's a demonstra- that's a demonstration of love. That actually is what that is all about because we know the power of when a person feels special, when a person feels loved. And that's what this is about. When, you know, I'm, I'm just harping on about this because I, I just feel like next week's going to be a big week for us. And we need, to, we need to know that each one of you are here today have a massive massive part in in a, you may not you may not be on the stage or you may not kind of you know be over here doing whatever they are twiddling knobs over there or or taking photos like Alex up there or whatever you might not be doing any of that but you could actually play one of the most important actually probably the most important part in this church by doing this seeing another person and letting them know that you love them, that you don't have to tell them, I love you, welcome along. I'll be like, weirdo. <laughs> but hey, man, welcome along, haven't seen you. I'm such and such. Would you like a coffee? Have you had a coffee yet? I don't drink coffee. Would you like a tea? I don't drink tea. Would you like a water? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Have you had some food? You know. Oh, you do this. Oh, okay, cool. I know a person. No, my uncle lives in America. It's like your cousin that lives in America. I don't know. The conversation always seems to go to America. <laughs> oh, I have an uncle in Chicago. Oh, so do I. I'm just, I'm just being silly, right? But that's how it works, you know. You should come next week. Send a text message the next day. I'm telling you, it just works. Kingdom of God just gets built when people begin to realize, hold on a second, there's this place, there's this family that loves. And central to it all is this is the fact that as we do that, we are just loving Jesus because we are loving what He loves the most. When we, when we give up a part of ourselves for another person, when we go out of our way to show love, We're loving what Jesus died for. And that is you and I and every person that walks these streets. He died for every one of them. Amen. C3 Mumbai is a church in the heart of India's commercial capital where a diverse group of people brought together to worship God and to pass on the hope of salvation by grace that we freely received. For more information about C3 Mumbai, please visit our website c3mumbai.com or visit our Facebook page. Follow us on Instagram or tweet us on our handle at C3 Mumbai. Hey, it's Ryan here. If you enjoyed this message and you live in Mumbai, we would love to meet you in person. Why don't you come along 11.30 a.m. Studio 10 at Famous Studios in Mahalakshmi.